curious if you could pick one place for an hour to just watch and observe how people walk and see what kind of floor safety issues exist any place in the world where would you pick any location location i think the i think the place that you're most likely to find people tripping is any lobby entranceway to a retail store pick wow. a big box retailer set a camera up in the lobby and uh just watch. why do you think that is because floor mats are prone to moving. Oh, and so oh, you're coming wow. out of a big box retailer. you got a big uh, shopping cart full of water. You push it across the floor mat. The floor mat buckles, curls, moves, mm-hmm. ripples. And Mrs. Jones, the 85-year-old who's walking out, she's not texting. She doesn't have her headset in. But she's not looking down mm-hmm. either. She's looking for her car keys, whatever. Yeah. And she hits that buckled edge and down she goes. In fact, we got a lot of videos on Falls Aren't Funny that's going to some are quite graphic. Wow. Uh, not to, not to, you know, spoiler alert, but it's some, <laughs> wow. Welcome back to Safety Matters. I am Russ Kenzior, and I am joined by my co-host, Sean Joseph. How's it going, everyone? Good to see you again. Good to see you, Russ. How are you? Noticed a shirt? I, I do notice a shirt. You're looking very if good you fall, it. I'll be there. Floor. Floor. There we'll talk is. a little bit later about uh, about the shirt and uh, how you, too, can get one of these. Right on. Um, but uh, we've got a lot to cover today, so uh, let's kind of jump right into the middle of, uh, of it. Let's do it. All right, first episode, number one. This came from um, a couple weeks ago, and an interesting story. It was in Fox News, of all things. And the headline was, Risky walking downstairs is more dangerous for young women than others for key reasons, according to a study. Uh, It goes on to say, hold on to the handrail and pay closer, better attention, suggests the author of this new study. So uh, we have a bunch of women that uh, are having a hard time going up and down stairs. Yeah. Did you know that? Um, I did not know that definitively. It looks like this article believes that. I'm curious to see how it how it goes. Well, on. let's talk it. Let's jump right in here, buddy. It's uh, young women are, according to the study, more likely to engage in behaviors or wear certain types of shoes or footwear that place them at a greater risk of falling downstairs uh, compared to young men, according to the study. These activities include multitasking, which women generally like to do, having conversations while descending the stairs, holding something in their hands, wearing sandals, flip-flops, or high heels. Does any of this come as a surprise to you? No, not the shoes. Sean, not, are, not the footwear. That's not you, is it? No. Not in this one, but I do have a pair just like yeah, that. Yeah, well, <laughs> women wear more, shall we say, dangerous footwear. Uh, these results were published in an observational study of college students on July 26th of this year in the open access journal called PLOS One. Hmm. Quote, my advice to everyone of all ages, wear appropriate shoes, use the handrail, look at the stairs, don't use any electronic device, put your phone in your pocket, and keep your hands free. For example, use a backpack instead of a purse, which I always prefer, or a, or a bag. Shirley Reidnick, senior author and professor of health and kinesiology. Mm. (laughs) How do you say that word? Kinesiology. Thank you. Uh, At Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana, told Fox News Digital in an email. Uh, Also goes on to talk about how, uh, well, apparently women, uh, short versus long staircases. The research team videotaped two indoor staircases on a university campus in the United States over a course of a semester. One of the staircases had only two steps, while the other staircase had 17 steps. Technically, Sean, I don't know if you know this, but a stairway or a staircase has to have three or more risers. What qualifies you are not You are not a stairway or a staircase unless you have, unless you have three or more risers. Oh, okay. So if you have two... Sh- Two steps, mm-hmm. two risers. Mm-hmm. That's what's called a short flight of steps. Okay, little technical, uh, little technical thing here for you. But yeah. uh, so two steps is not actually a stairway or a staircase. It. You need to have three. Okay. After analyzing twenty four hundred young adults, 
either on the short staircase, 52% of whom were women, or the long staircase, the one that had 17 steps, 29% of whom were women, the researchers discovered eight risky behaviors ah. that young people practice. Now, what do you think some of these risky behaviors are? Well, well take a guess. Skipping steps is one, I would say. Skipping steps. Whether you're walking up or down, not going step by step, but maybe you're in a rush, so you skip steps. Meaning take two at a time? Correct. Not skipping on a step. Correct, yeah. Okay, so that's what you're skipping think. over a step. So you think that's going to be the uh, the big one? That's Anything when else? it jumps out. Um, uh, another one would be... Still? Well, they already gave you some of them. Not using the handrail. Okay, right. got that. But... Um, that's yeah. So not using the handrail, skipping over steps, um, like yeah, using the phone. That wouldn't count, right? We're talking about actual things that they do, like when they're walking down. Well, let's let's just find out all things that jump out, right? Yeah, using all the things phone, that jump out. Having something on your arm that would compromise the weight, so you wouldn't use the handrail. For instance, right? If I was holding a bag on my arm, use the handrail. It's going to slide off, so I wouldn't use it altogether. Um, the phone would distract me. Um, yeah, carrying something, looking at something. All um, right, well, there's eight, eight of them. Yeah. And actually, you got one of them. <laughs> of course, not using the hand rail. Not watching the stairs oh, wow. while descending, meaning you're not looking down. You're kind of looking forward or you're looking, well, at a cell phone. Yeah. Shoes, sandals, flip-flops, high heels. You know what the most dangerous shoe there is? Is what I've, do you think? What do you think the most dangerous type of shoes a person can wear? High heels would be my first. Well, a person, not just women. Uh, anybody? Um, yeah. Oof. Is it? I don't know. I really yeah. think yes. Boots? No. Okay. No boots. Boots does not qualify. Okay. Flip-flops. Flip -flops. Correct. Uh, flip-flops. So yeah. here you go. Wearing okay. sandals, flip-flops, or high heels. Okay. Number four, having a conversation with another person or on a smartphone. I assume that means you're walking next to somebody. Yeah. Going down the stairs. Mm -hmm. Using an electronic device. I assume that's like an iPad. Something other than a cell phone. Maybe that includes cell phones. Yeah. Keeping hands in their pockets. That's one. I, that's a good one. That's a good one. Makes so much sense, but just not think of it. Yeah. It, their hands could absolutely break your fall and just yeah. maintain safety. Uh, holding something. That was what you, you, you got that one. And mm -hmm. you got skipping steps. I think eight jumped out because I do that. And I'm always like, one day I'm going to miss a step and I'm going to be like, this is. You exactly probably already right. have. You just won't admit it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, four men <laughs> lost their balance on the long staircase while one woman did so on the short staircase, but all recovered. Study found that women were significantly less likely to use the handrail on the long staircase, more likely to be holding something in their hands. Well, women tend to carry purses and stuff, right? More likely to be engaged in conversation and more likely to wear either sandals or heels. That I, that I believe. Uh, but women were less likely to skip steps and more likely to look at the stair tread during the transition steps mm. compared to their male counterparts. Okay. So really what you're saying is the skipping steps thing is kind of a guy thing. Yeah. And women like generally don't skip steps. Yeah. And, um, you know, again, it's interesting. The last part talks about the study is limited because it's observational. It only describes the observed behavior, mm -hmm. which I found to be quite interesting. They um, also went on to talk about the three groups most likely to fall on stairs, Ooh. children under the age of three. And I would assume that's a balance issue. They're just not used to walking up and down stairs, and their little legs just can't step up as high. Yeah, Young adults in their 20s. That's kind of what we're talking about in this research. And the third one, which is no secret, older adults over age, five, over age 85. Uh, young adult women are 80% more likely to injure themselves compared to men, which is the highest injury rate among all ages and sexes, except for women in their 80s or above. Hmm. 
Uh, one out of every five falls causes a serious injury, such as a broken bone, head injury. Oh my God. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, otherwise known as the CDC, most common cause of traumatic brain injuries are due to falls, while more than 95% of hip fractures are caused by falling, Holy according moly. to the CDC. Did you know that? That last paragraph is alarming. So... Kind of scary, isn't it? One fifth of falls leads to a serious injury, and then most. What was it? Brain draw. Uh, yeah. Holy crap! Talk about brain injuries. Traumatic brain injuries. So, so you fall down the stairs and you hit your head, and um, obviously many people will die as a result of striking their head off. Geez. I mean, you're falling down the stairs. Yeah. Remember, these are not going up the stairs. Um. Unless you're Joe Biden, he can't seem to navigate up the exactly. stairs of Air Force yeah. One very well. But again, when you fall up the stairs, you stumble and you kind of fall forwards and catch yourself. But you go down the stairs, man, and that's, yeah. I mean, that's like you're taking you are taking one hell of a dangerous tumble, man. Yeah. It is not it is not pleasant. And um, you know when you when you when you turn eighty five or eighty, um, that's a nightmare. So in understanding two key parts. The most common reasons, those eight reasons, and then also that last paragraph blew my mind. Like the severity of, you know, these are going to happen. Ideally, we can prevent them, but yeah, once it gets bad, it like these are really serious injuries. So, what would you say as a, just an expert on, you know, ensuring uh, safety, specifically within floors, walking standards, things like that? There's a lot of things to overcome in those eight. You know, how can we? get better at that? Where would you start with tackling the problem? Well, here's the first thing I would do. Let's go back to the eight. How many of these eight things are within the person's control? L number one, number two, number three, although I think that's a predetermined choice before you walk down the stairs. Number four is, number five is, number six is, number seven is, number eight. So I'd say seven out of the eight, like, you can't necessarily change your shoes right. all the time. But. So everything that leads to falls for younger people downstairs is really within their control. It's not the staircase's fault. It's not the, the geometry of the stair, the rise and the run, the tread. It's not the handrail, whether there is a handrail or not. It's not the stair tread slip resistance, right? So it has really nothing to do, according to this research, uh, with the geometry of the staircase, it has everything to do with the user of the staircase. Yeah. So how do you modify people's behavior? That's ultimately what we're talking about, Absolutely. right? I mean, we're, we're talking about how is it that you change the way people perceive risk? Yes. Predominantly going downstairs. There, there's a question for you, too. From, from everybody you know, do you think people see a staircase as being, like, now we have the data. It could be a huge risk if you don't take it seriously. Do you think people approach stairs like that at all? I think most young people tend to think they're they'll never die. Yeah, they have no, they bounce, they fall. Yeah, so what? What's the big deal? Remember, the the, the brain doesn't fully develop until you're 25, 26. So that's mitigation of risk. They don't quite get it. Right. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can multitask. I can do all these things at the same time. Uh, when oftentimes um, they can't. And, and in fact, the research goes on. Talks about, you know, when looking at, you know, our phone going downstairs while on our headphones, which, by the way, that's predominantly a young person's deal, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. that, that's, that's, you don't find 80 year olds walking downstairs looking at their iPhone and no. their headset on. I mean, you, it, this is almost exclusive to a younger uh, population. But, uh, you know, we, we, when you're, when you're distracted, meaning visually and, and with, you know, li and when you're listening to music, you lose two of your, two of your sensory inputs and you put yourself at risk. I mean, it's really that simple. I mean, you're, lo you're losing data input. Uh, they also said that wearing appropriate footwear on stairs is important, but acknowledged, but the latest fashion trend may trump safety. And obviously that's the case, right? And let's be honest. I mean, people say, look, I'm not going to wear safe shoes are ugly. Um, I know that because I had a company that made, produced safety shoes and they were attractively ugly. Um, they were not good looking. It's not the kind of shoe you'd want to wear, but, you know, it was kind of a sport athletic look um, ish. But they're not stylish. No, they do make safety shoes that are stylish. But in this study, they kind of concluded that, you know, that is not 
uh, people's first choice of footwear, so they take it for for granted that they're wearing these types of shoes. Yeah, and um, and so what's your feedback? What's your what's your read on this? Well, my read it on it is. Let's not be a society that waits to have an injury until we take it seriously. I think we know of those eight, there are things that we're all probably guilty of. I'm probably guilty of all of those outside of wearing heels. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, when you say heels, it can be other forms of exactly. unsafe shoes. How about barefooted? I, yeah, that's no true. No shoes. What if you're not wearing shoes at all? Or how about, how about the real bad oh, one, that's Sean? What's the worst one? Um, stockings. Oh yeah, just in your stockings. Yeah. Remember as a kid running up the stairs, oh, yeah, the wooden sock, stairs with yeah. your socks on. Well, I was thinking Whoa. wood when you're like barefoot. Whoa! Like, what if your feet are wet? There are a lot yeah. of conditions. I think the biggest thing that jumped out with me is let's prevent, right? Let's prevent and decrease the overall number. But you know what can also be done. When something goes awry, and it looks like it happens pretty often, one out of five is pretty, 20% is pretty damn high. Yeah. Um, and some of these injuries are, you can't recover from. I mean, you get brain damage, a lot of that's irrepla- like irreversible. So that, I don't know the answer. Uh, would love to hear your thoughts on, you know, just. That might actually explain Joe Biden. He had a lot of. I mean, Joe just like, yeah, the noggin. Yeah. I mean, because these are only he ones that have been documented. I mean, what we see on TV has got to be microscopically small number of falls he had and i'm not picking it i'm just saying you know how many times maybe has he struck his head and yeah no fault of his own the aging process kind of kind of does that but um i thought this is an interesting piece of research uh, the second subject we're going to cover today is going to pick up kind of on that theme number two and this is just came out a few days later fox news again mm-hmm. young people are more likely to fall while texting and walking new study says not, nothing to do with stairs okay. let's take the stare out of it right. just in general on a level walking surface study was conducted amongst amongst college students at a university in australia and it kind of went like this young people are more likely to fall while they are texting and walking at the same time as opposed to walking without texting uh, neuroscientist and engineer Dr. Matthew Brody and Dr. Yoshiro Okubo at the University of New South Wales in Australia conducted the study. The first question I ask is, um, who's funding this research for the university in Australia to be uh, monitoring how young people fall while texting? Not that I'm not that I'm saying it's not valuable, but it just seems like an odd study. Right. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, Brody told. SWNS, the British News news Service, that he wanted to perform the study to see if the often discussed dangers of texting and walking at the same time were real. And they are real. On any day, it seems as many as 80% of people, both younger and older, may be headed down in texting, meaning head down in texting. Uh, He said, I wanted to know if these dangers are real or imagined, and to measure the risk in a repeatable way, meaning science. He also said in a release about the study that the authors took a group of 50 people, 50 undergraduate students, that means young people, put them in a simulated environment along with random threats and hazards uh, as a release about the study explained. For instance, the students were asked to walk across a tiled hazard walkway at the Neuroscience Research Australia's Gate Lab it had one hidden tile that could slide out of place potentially. So imagine you're kind of um, you're kind of being told, "Hey, let's walk across the surface." Yeah. And unbeknownst to you, one of the tiles you're about to step on is going to slide out from under your feet. Um, so they kind of created a hazard. Here's kind of the setup that they used. Um, there she is. Note the, the masks. They want to make sure that they're. Not giving each other COVID as they're about to break their neck. <laughs> I was going to say, that's a double On a right tile there. floor. <laughs> uh, there she is texting. You notice one thing that I'm going to bring up here in a minute that is a big problem. What do you notice that is a big problem in this, in the way they performed the study? Look at the photograph. You, you can see it right there. Boom. What is it? Um, what's jumping out here? So What's jumping out? It's not the graph. See the red thing over her head? Yes. You know what that is? No. That's a harness. 
Oh, I see, see, she's harnessed up. Oh, uh, okay. False sense of security. Oh, when yeah, when okay. you're walking around in a in a research facility mm. with a harness on, and I tell you, be, you know, just walk normally. Yeah. You know, just pretend you're walking normally, and we're doing a study on people slipping and falling. You're anticipating falling. Yeah, so you're, you're not what you call papers. walking normally with a harness in a lab. It's not walking normally. Yeah, I feel like it's that a compromises. little abnormal. You know, if you want my opinion, the whole study should be based on the situation as it is. Yeah, I mean, which is it? You know? Yeah. So they went on to say that the students wore a safety harness during the test and were asked to walk without texting, and then once again while texting. A sentence. The quick brown fax jumps over the lazy dog. That's what you had to fax. That's what you had to test. <laughs> As the release also detailed, after analyzing the angle at which the participants were walking, the authors found the students were more likely to fall if they were also texting. Now it says, angle that they were walking. Angle at which the participants were walking. Can you explain to me what that means? As I read it, it makes it seem that... Whatever conclusion they're making about texting and walking is dependent on, yeah, them walking at. What I'm trying to understand is this the individual walking at a certain angle, or is it the floor is at a certain angle? Does it matter? I think ultimately, in the big picture of a fall, it doesn't. If angles are, if the geometry and the physics are incorrect, something somebody will fall. Angle. I'm assuming they mean stride length okay the angle of their legs as they're walking okay so if you're taking a shorter stride mm -hmm. you have a lesser angle than right. a longer stride sure i'm yeah. assuming that's what they mean uh, okay yeah. stride length sure so if you take little choppy steps little shuffles it changes your um it changes your perception of what the floor is mm -hmm. in other words if you're walking on ice yeah and oh, you know it's ice Absolutely. That's you kind of take that little short choppy step because mm -hmm. you don't fall versus walking. Wow, that's a great analogy. Normally on a... 100%. If I had to walk on an ice rink, they'd be really short because right. your safety is absolutely compromised. Wow. Yeah. So I'm... I'm. See, I look at it this way. <clears throat> this is the reality of texting while you're walking. Mm -hmm. You don't have a harness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're walking at your normal pace. Yeah. You're not anticipating falling. You, you're not, well, in this photo, you're not on ice or snow. So I would think this kind of, quote unquote, research and this would be far more valuable than putting a harness on a 24-year-old in a laboratory saying we're doing a study about how people text and, and fall and right. just walk normally. Right. Yeah, well, well you're, you know it's coming, so you know the fall is coming, so what, how do you walk normally when you can anticipate something's going to happen? You know, even showing that picture of the city, it just kind of, I was already kind of thinking, you know, urban areas, great place for this type of study. People are walking all over the place, short distances, and they're busy, you know, walk and talk, you know, watching things as they walk. I wonder also, how many people trip over each other? Well, that's a... Excellent point. In fact, we have a new series out called Falls Aren't Funny, where I post once a week a short video, less than 30 seconds, of real people caught on surveillance video really falling, you know, yeah. tripping on floor mats, slipping on wet floors. Um, you know, that's experiential. I mean, that's observational, but it's not manipulated. I right. think when you put harnesses on people, you kind of prep them and kind of let them think that there's something going to happen that they... It's like a horror movie. Yeah. You know, you never you never want to tell somebody, yeah, the guy's about to, you know, when she when she turns around, he's gonna stab her in the back. Don't fall. Right. So <laughs> you kind of kind of know what I'm getting at here. So um the fact that they just kind of kind of set them up is is to me a little, you know, you're gonna you're gonna skew the results. But if you actually watch real people really slipping and falling on real floors, okay. you know, you're gonna get a better understanding of how people uh, you know, what the mechanics are. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, those people are oftentimes severely injured. In fact, when you look at the videos on Falls Aren't Funny that are coming out every week, um, both on the, the YouTube channel and Instagram, you're going to see a lot of people really getting hurt. And some of it's pretty hard to watch, but it's real. And if you really want to study how people fall, sadly, that's, in my view, sure. a better way to do it. Not yeah. that I would encourage people to want to mm -hmm. fall. You certainly don't want anyone getting hurt. But, uh, you know, harnessing folks up, in my opinion, Sean, does not work. 
Yeah, I'm with you. And curious, if you could pick one place for an hour to just watch and observe how people walk and see what kind of floor safety issues exist, any place in the world, where would you pick? Any location? Location. I think the I think the place that you're most likely to find people tripping is any lobby entranceway to a retail store. Pick a big box retailer. Set a camera up in the lobby and uh, just watch. Why do you think that is? P- because floor mats are prone to moving. Oh, and so oh, you're coming wow. out of a big box retailer. you got a big uh, shopping cart full of water. You push it across the floor mat. The floor mat buckles, curls, moves, mm-hmm. ripples. And Mrs. Jones, the 85-year-old who's walking out, she's not texting. She doesn't have her headset in. But she's not looking down mm-hmm. either. She's looking for her car keys, whatever. Yeah. And she hits that buckled edge, and down she goes. In fact, we got a lot of videos on Falls Aren't Funny. That's going to come. Some are quite graphic. Wow! Uh, not to, not to, you know, spoiler alert, but it's some. <laughs> wow! Yeah. Um. Again, all the people's faces are blurred out, so to protect their privacy. But the study actually concluded by saying that the results, um, the results prove that not only were the students more likely to fall when texting, but their texting accuracy was low. I found that fast. <laughs> <laughs> what, you can't do two things at once? Well, they just couldn't remember the, what was it, the brown cat jumps over the fence or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So it was uh, a bit perplexing. Uh, what surprised the researchers is how differently people responded to the, quote, threat of slipping, mm-hmm. said Brody. And this is the point I was getting at, referencing the way the young people were told ahead of time that there was dangers ahead. Some slowed down, uh, took a more cautious approach. Others sped up in anticipating of slipping. Such different approaches reinforce how no two people are the same and no, uh, and, and to better prevent accidents from texting while walking. Uh, again, multiple strategies may be needed. What would you think would be a reasonable strategy to prevent uh, this type of thing? What would you propose society does? What Man. do we do to help these young people from getting hurt while texting? So this was, it's, it's funny you asked that. They I actually, was, I'm going to show you a slide where they actually have a proposal. Do they? Yeah. What do you think it is? A shorthand guess is Come on, less gotta, time on the phone. Kind of think like a true socialist. Yeah. If, I mean, if you're walking, look ahead, uh, be conscious of your surroundings, get off your phone. The recurring thing I'm mm. seeing in our first two segments is being on your phone could lead to some. Now serious let's stop issues. smoking weed. Yeah, well, that helps too. Uh, yeah, and give up, the, give up the ganja. Give up, yeah, <laughs> give up the, uh, <laughs> give up the crack pipe. Uh, no, it's actually it, well, you got to read it. Uh, they went on to say that perhaps technology could be developed to help prevent injuries that might occur <laughs> from walking and texting at the same time. You know, you got to read this. Suggested that implementing a locking technology similar to what is used when people are driving. For those who are walking and looking at their screen, the technology could detect walking activity and activate a screen lock to prevent texting during <laughs> that time. So, what do you think of that? So, I'm laughing because this is how I process it. Technology is contributing to the problem. So, you can fix the problem by adding more technology to eliminate the problem. Right. Now we have to have phones that lock things out because it doesn't like what you're doing. What happened to keeping things simple? Well, thank you. So I asked a question. Do people have the right to walk while they text? Or should government intervene for your own safety? Oh, man. Do you have a right to text while you're walking? Do you have a right to listen to music when you're walking? Do you have a right to actually um, have a conversation with somebody as you're walking down the stairs? Yes. Or does government have to intervene and say, hold on now, for your safety, we're locking your, your phone out from uh, yeah. from being able to, 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 to walk and text at the same time. That's really what they're saying. Right? Yeah. What, we, we're going to control you. What yeah. you do, your behavior. By the way, I, I would assume the logical extension of this technology would be they would be recording you, oh, the fact that you're texting as you're walking 100%. down a staircase. Like, how would they ever know? They, exactly. would, they would track it. In other words, you're, this technology mm-hmm. will track your behavior and, of course, report that to the mothership of government and the insurance industry to say you're such unsafe behavior, mm-hmm. you know, and you're high risk. You're a high walking risk. Yeah. So um, I thought that was an interesting uh, study. 
Sean, do you like cheese? I do like cheese. You do like cheese. Well, we're just a cheese story. Italian. Is it a, is, is Italian or Italian? Italian. I think it's Italian. Italian but... patriarch crushed under cheese wheel avalanche. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Grieving family rushes to salvage supply. The Chiap- Chiapriani warehouse contained 25,000 wheels of cheese that were arranged on shelves. The cheesemaker died, the owner of the company, after thousands of cheese wheels fell and crushed him in the warehouse. Did you hear this story? I did not. But I have a friend. She loves cheese. We have cheese conversations. She's going to be devastated to hear this. All right. So this is a cheese crushing story. <laughs> um, well, crushed by cheese story. Uh, anyhow, thousands of wheels fell on him. Gia- Giacomo Cipriani, 74, was checking over his stock Sunday night when a shelf buckled, dropped as many as 15,000 wheels of cheese on him in the avalanche. Oh Each wheel weighed as much as 85 pounds, oh the BBC no. reported. Firefighters responded after neighbors reported a sound like thunder from the warehouse to search for Chiappiani to 12 hours before authorities located his body. There he is. Oh, my God. Crushed by the very cheese he was crafting. Cipriani Warehouse in Lombardi contained 25,000 wheels of Grana Padermo, a hard cheese similar to Parmesan. Economic damages totaled about $7.7 million in losses. Firefighters determined that Cipriani used a machine to rotate and clean the cheese wheels, which may have disturbed the shelf. An investigation will determine the full story of how the collapse occurred. But a local official believed the machine must have malfunctioned. So they're going to blame this on the machine. Hey, did you hear about the uh, big symposium coming up this fall? Uh, I didn't, but you should tell us about it. Well... You know, now now that you ask, it gets back to this shirt, all right? The shirt. It's all about the shirt, Sean. Which you look amazing in, by the way. Yeah, I sure do, don't I? Uh, <laughs> Hearst Convention Center here in Hearst, Texas, just outside of Dallas, is the second international symposium on slip, trip, and fall prevention. It's going to be a big deal, 25th and 26th of September. Here's kind of the cool thing. Uh, the symposium is broken down into four different uh, learning tracks. One for food service, hospitality, and healthcare professionals. A second for retail and grocery store professionals and public facilities. Hey, maybe maybe, um, maybe Herman could take and come out and check out the course. I mean, he's got some time on his hands, right? I mean, well, nothing not, going on with him. He's not feeling well. He's but a maybe, public yeah. official, or right. was. Uh, we got a third track for legal regulation, insurance risk management, Professionals, and then the last track, Sean, is on facilities maintenance and housekeeping, janitorial cool. people. So that's going to be coming up in uh, September. Very nice. Uh, National Floor Safety Institute. These shirts will be available yes. um, for purchase. If you fall, I'll be there. Floor. And so uh, this fall, come to the symposium. You can register online. By the way, if you can't participate in person, you can watch the symposium online. It is live streamed across the world. There's going to be speakers from literally all over the world. We have folks from Germany, and um, I can't even tell you how many countries are going to be there, but quite a few people 42, 46 speakers. It's a big deal. Sean, are you going to be there, buddy? I'm going to try my best. And also, I'm just looking out for all the folks that unfortunately will not be able to be there. Where do they get a shirt? Where can they order this uh, out in the ether? Is that possible mm, for them? Can you know make- what? Uh, yes, it will be. There's going to be some, um, what do you call it, merch on Ooh. the website. We're going to come out. with. Well, yeah, I got some cool stuff coming out. Um, a lot of stuff coming out uh, shortly. And, but uh, right now, it's going to be available to Symposium. Um, also, uh, interesting note to, to make here is we topped 76,000 subscribers, Sean. Yeah, did you know that? I did. Dude, I saw that. Dude, I mean, we. hey, thank you. You guys are, are making our day, right, Sean? I mean, this is pretty amazing. Uh, we hopefully will hit 100,000 subscribers with your, uh, your help uh, between now and the end of the year. So uh, thanks for watching Safety News. We covered a lot of ground today. Um, some of it was pretty heavy. 
And some of it was a little bit lighter, but, um, you know, it's all about protecting people. It's all about taking care of people and telling the truth, telling the story the way it is. And sadly, um, you know, when people kind of step out of line, we're going to, we're going to call them on the carpet. Uh, Not a lot of aloha coming from this guy Um, because safety matters. It does. And um, th- there's been a lot of uh, a lot of safety g- stuff going on in the media. Next episode, I'm going to throw you guys a curveball, and we're going to cover a really interesting topic. One that I think you're going to find not only interesting but entertaining. And so, uh, with that, this is Russ Kenzior and my co-host Sean Joseph. Bye, everyone. Saying thanks for watching Safety News, and we will see you next time.